in the 20th century, we, I mean, the, 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 in the top 10 best selling books of all time are The Lord of the Rings and The Lion, Witch and the Wardrobe. Uh, in other words, the, the, the great art was produced in the 20th century. The great art which has made its mark uh, in, in some sort of, uh, uh, nothing, it's not eternal, but it's, it's, it's going to be in a, in a pagan sense, it's going to live for centuries and centuries unless none of us can read any, any longer. Um, so uh, great art was produced in the 20th century and, and, and great music. Um, and so I, I, I think that we'll look back uh, on the 20th century and we'll see that the dross, which will be most of it, but we'll see there were, there were priceless gems amidst the dross. And the same, and the, and the same will be true of the, true of the 21st century. As, it's, as it's true of all centuries. As a father, just, I mean, it's just for you personally without any names, um, do you get a sense that over the last 30 or 40 years, that there are people of that caliber? Yeah, I, 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 my understanding of things from my, my perception, from my own experience of being in the field, so to speak, is that there was a doldrums that sort of set in the 60s and really sort of lingered on to the end of the 20th century. Um, but I do see in the last 50 to 20 years a real revival going on. And I think it's probably actually connected to the fact that we're not comfortable anymore in the culture. Um, you know, you said that comfort is a great corrupter, and, and you know, if, we, if we're too comfortable, we don't produce great art. Mm -hmm. And I think Catholics are uncomfortable now, and it's good for them. Do you think that there's um, a particular media that is especially right for its own particular age? Like we seem to be in an age of film right now. I don't really know, but like you were greatly affected by reading. You were in a state of pain. Something changed in your you wanted answers maybe and you read. Do people today turn to that? Is there hope for all kinds of media to be effective, or is there one that you think is especially effective today? Well, the thing I would say, I wrote an article a few months back called "Distracting Ourselves to Death," and there's a difference. There's a difference between taking time, which is good, and wasting time, which isn't. Uh, and one of the good things, obviously we can talk about prayer and time for taking time out for, for prayer and meditation, but one of the great things about poetry is it forces you to slow down and to disengage. You can't read poetry quickly, if you, because if you start to try to read quickly, you're not reading it at all. So it, it forces you to come down a gear. In other words, it's good for the soul. Um, so, whereas, I'm, and, and uh, you know, I'm certainly not opposed to, to film, and uh, there's some great film out of this great art out there. But I do think that when we're watching a film, it's passive, right? Things are being done to us. Uh, we're not really that engaged. Uh, um, the, dominant, the dominant force is, is, is the film itself, or the filmmaker, ultimately. Um, where with poetry, we can put ourselves in it. And it's true of literature in a more general sense, but poetry particularly. So, you know, I, I, I can say, and it, I, it's not just being... Um, uh, hyperbolic um, poetry can save your soul. Now, obviously, under grace, I don't want to be a heretic, you know. But poetry can save your soul because if you want to get in the habit every day of spending thirty minutes in the company of great poetry, you would be transformed. Mm -hmm. well, to get that out into the world, if, if our goal is evangelization, how do we get poetry, especially? Well, we have to begin by becoming holy ourselves. And, and the more holy that we become, the more of a force we'll be. So we do need to get our own house in order. So I would, I would go back to my to the status quo ante, if you like, of my, state, my state, statement that uh, we should spend half an hour day with poetry, and that would transform us, and everything we do thereafter would be improved because of that. And another good thing, if you read this magazine, I heard of called, called uh, Magnifica. There's <laughs> <laughs> always poetry in there. It is. And the semester is pretty good. And image. Poetry in all of those. Yeah. Good new poetry too. <laughs> so Joseph, we're very grateful to you for showing us all this beauty of your remarks, of your life, of your works, because it fills us with a sense of gratitude and it makes us want to ask the right questions. Thank so you, we're Paul. really indebted to you. Thank you very much. <laughs>